Alright, in this video I'm going to go over Poisson processes and um, describe them in two separate definitions. So hopefully between the two you'll get a good holistic uh, definition of what a Poisson process is. Just to start off, a Poisson process is a stochastic uh, or a, a continuous time stochastic process um, that is used to measure the number of arrivals or events that occur over a specific interval. So uh, let's just start by laying out the timeline that our events are occurring. So if this is our timeline, we can look at each event that occurs discreetly on the timeline at specific times. So we can say that event one occurs at time t1, event two occurs at time t2, and so on. Well, we also can measure the time between these events. And let's say that we can measure this time between events as an exponential random variable with a mean of one over lambda. And we'll represent this time between events as tilde. And uh, so I'm going to go down here and just go over the definition of what tilde of i is. Uh, just definition wise, it describes the interval of time between event i, uh, i minus 1, and i. So tilde 2 describes the time between uh, event 1 and event 2. And this has an exponential distribution with a mean of 1 over lambda, so it has a rate of lambda. And we already said that t of n is the time at which event n occurs. So this is when event 1 occurs, t2 is when event 2 occurs, t3 is when event 3 occurs. Um, but we can also think of this as the summation of all of the arrival times up to that event n. So up to event 1, we just have tilde 1. And uh, up to event uh, 3, we have tilde 1 plus tilde 2 plus tilde 3. Um, and then we know that, of course, t0 is equal to 0 because uh, we have not had any time pass. So um, let's talk about one more variable, which is n of t. Uh, and it's defined mathematically as the max value for n uh, such that t of n is less than some time that you've given it t. Uh, so let's say this t right here is equal to 100, and let's say we plot 100 on this timeline right here. So if we plot 100 right there, then uh, the max n for a t of n that's less than that is 5, or less than or equal to it is 5, because it's right on there. And if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we've had 5 events up to that point. So we can label n of t means uh, it's measuring the number of arrivals or events that occur over that time interval uh, from zero to that t that you provided. So now we're going to get into why this is called a Poisson process. Uh, and we're revealing that actually this n of t value follows a Poisson distribution with a mean lambda t or a rate lambda t. Uh, so that, that basically sums up what a Poisson uh, process is. Uh, hopefully that makes sense, but if it doesn't, we're also going to look at it from a different perspective uh, with my second definition. So here's definition two. Uh, so let's say we have a stochastic process uh, with n of t such that t is greater than or equal to zero. Um, then we know it's a Poisson process if First of all, n of 0 is equal to 0, uh, which makes sense because at time 0, no events have happened. Uh, then our second rule is that n of t plus s minus n of s has a Poisson distribution with mean lambda t. Now, we already looked up and we saw the example where um, s is equal to 0, and we know that that follows a Poisson distribution with lambda t, but that can actually be expanded. Um, to all values of s, where uh, we have n of t plus s minus n of s. And that really does make sense if you think about the memoryless property of the exponential intervals that we have. Um, but to not go into too much detail about that, 
Um, that is always true for Poisson processes. And um, last of all, uh, N of T has inter in, uh, independent in increments. So for every uh, increment of N of T you have, uh, they're all actually going to be independent. And if all of these are true, then you have a Poisson process. But also, if any of these rules aren't true, then you're not going to have a Poisson process. So that's just a different light to look at a Poisson process uh, as. But also, um, it's very important that uh, you know these rules for Poisson processes uh, because they're very useful for solving problems that have to do with Poisson processes. So that's all I have to say about this, uh, and I hope that you enjoyed the video.